Good afternoon all. Um, if you've been watching my attempts to solder these surface mount chips onto these little boards using a very unconventional, uh, a very low tech and a very low cost technique, in other words this 35 watt halogen lamp to uh, melt the solder, the solder paste under these chips and solder them onto these boards, then you'll have seen me build this little test rig because I wanted to test the seven chips that I soldered onto seven boards just to make sure that um, the heat from that lamp hadn't actually damaged the boards and yeah all seven of them work fine including this one which is quite remarkable because while I was soldering these chips onto these boards I was more concerned about getting the solder paste to uh, distribute itself evenly among the pins that I wasn't really watching terribly closely the orientation of these chips on the boards and these chips are slightly odd they don't have an indent for pin one they actually have a chamfer um, yes I think this leading edge is chamfered in fact let's take a quick look at that yes you can just about see there that the uh, pin one edge the edge which uh, starts at pin one is actually chamfered away and apart from the lettering on the chip, that's the only way to uh, know where the pin one position is. So one out of these seven chips, I soldered the wrong way around. And of course, I was looking at the uh, legends on this uh, printed circuit board when I put it into my breadboard. And I fried the chip because I had VCC and ground the wrong way around. And it smelt bad. Smoke came out. Little heat blister appeared and all that stuff. In fact, let's have another look at that. Let's pop it in. Uh, mm, something's not, oh, that's frying. Yeah, that's getting hot. <laughs> let's switch that off right now. Yeah, so that looked pretty bad. That looked pretty terminal. I thought that, that um, I'd cooked this chip and it would never work again, but it does work. Look, it's sitting in the board. Yes, I've had to remark the board with a new pin one ident because the uh, silk screen says pin one is up there i know it's down here but yeah that still works um or does it you see earlier on in that same video where i built this test rig i was kind of moving things around and um i moved the vcc pin because i wanted to fit in fact i wanted to fit this um eighth diode because originally i had it on the other side because actually the output for that eighth diode is on the other side of the chip and I was moving this VCC link and I took it out and the circuit still worked which surprised me a little bit but it shouldn't because we have seen this uh, before not in my videos but uh, Dave Jones has done a thing on uh, microcontrollers that still work even with no VCC so what if by chance, um, because I did reverse ground and VCC, what if by chance the only part of the chip that actually burnt out was the internal link to the VCC pin? So because this chip runs with no connection to VCC, and we know why that happens, it's because of the ESD uh, protection diodes. But uh, yeah, what if that is the bit that burnt out? Then yeah, it would still work. But what if that wasn't the bit that burnt out? What if um, I actually burnt out the link to ground? After all, I did connect VCC and ground the wrong way around. So let's actually remove ground. And it still works. This um, three bits of binary to one of eight active low decoder is actually functioning with no connection to VCC and no connection to ground. That's pretty amazing. So what if when I fried this chip, I actually fried the internal connection to the VCC pin and I fried the internal connection to the ground pin, it would actually still work because the circuit can find other paths for current. It can actually find them through uh, inputs. I've got three inputs here. They are going through 1K resistors. Um, there's also an input here, the active high enable pin is uh, also going through a 1K resistor up to VCC. But there are two wires here, which are the active low enables, which are pulling direct to ground. So maybe um, current is being synced from VCC through these LEDs 
down to ground through these two uh, enable inputs. And uh, one way to test that would be to take these enable inputs out and you can see that the chip is kind of still enabled but it's gone a bit strange and let's uh, replace them with 1k resistors because I'm trying to sync current through these LEDs to ground somewhere but if I make all my other connections to this chip um, 1k resistors then we should see some dimming effects so let's put that one in as a 1k resistor got some rather strange behavior there let's put this one in as a 1k resistor Ah, now we can actually see something rather weird there. The chip is only working on four of the outputs. The other four outputs aren't working at all. So certainly removing all paths to ground is causing some real problems. Let's go a bit further. Let's actually start replacing 1K resistors with 100K resistors because this thing will still work with 100k resistors, um, actually I'll take all those three out, those are the three uh, binary inputs coming from the uh, binary count here, let's put those on with 100k resistors, it will still work because it's CMOS, the inputs require very little current to operate, so let's put that one in, and we are getting it doing some sort of count, let's put uh, that one in as a 100k resistor, now we've got the same issue there. Oh, sometimes it's working, sometimes it isn't. Okay, well let's really kill this by replacing these two um, active low enables with 100k resistors. Should still work, it should be enough to pull these pins down. But of course there's no current path now. And uh, we've got something, the chip's misbehaving and the LEDs are now very dim because there's just simply nowhere for the current that's flowing through these LEDs from VCC up here down to ground to go because we've got no ground connection. 100k resistor pull up there, 200k pull downs, three 100k uh, resistors to take the addresses here and put them into the three address lines. So yeah, understandably, this chip's not working very well. Now, if I put ground, my ground connection to the chip back, are these all going to light up bright again? Is it all going to start working again? Yes, it does. Look at that. That's actually working completely fine. So it has found um, a current path through the chip to ground via the ground connection. Now, normally this ground connection would always be there. But you can see from the fact that if I take it out, it really is struggling to operate. It's kind of half operating. And if I put it back in, it works fine. That the internal connection from the ground pin to all the electronics inside that chip must still be intact because we can see something happening when I put it in and take it out. Now, what about testing the internal connection um, from VCC to the internal electronics of the chip, the VCC pin? Um, at the moment, we don't seem to need VCC. And again, we know that the reason for this is because um, VCC can be supplied through other inputs. Uh, there's very little because all the inputs of this chip have got 100k resistors in. So this chip's operating on an extremely tiny current. And they do. HC MOS works on an extremely tiny current. The reason these LEDs are bright is because this chip is sinking current from VCC, here's, here's where the current's coming from, VCC, it's being synced through the LED down to ground. And of course, I've now got a ground connection, so that's working fine. But how do I tell if um, the internal connection to VCC is working? Well, I could put a uh, ammeter on it and see whether it's drawing any current, but I want to find um, a much more novel way of doing it than that. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to flip these LEDs around so that the chip is actually sourcing current to these LEDs. Now, if I take one of these LEDs out, flip it around, I'm going to have to put the resistor to the ground line, which actually isn't connected up. So let's just pop that in um, there. So that's not lit. Not surprising. I have no naught volts on that blue line. Let's put a wire in to put some naught volts on there. And we've got some fairly nasty 
dim, not working terribly well behavior there. So the chip doesn't seem like it's able to source current to that LED very effectively. Um, let's flip another one around if I can get to it so that the chip is also sourcing current. Now, of course, if I do this, the logic changes. These are going to be on uh, for most of the time and only go off when these outputs go low, when the output is selected by the binary count. But again, this is not looking terribly good. These are bright. These are very dim. So uh, no, it's having a real problem sourcing current to these LEDs. And that's not surprising because the chip has no direct access to VCC. It's only getting high voltages when these various inputs, this one is high all the time, these three are sort of going high and low, um, when it's getting um, high voltage, a five volt voltage through the ESD protection diodes into the chip and it's able to source some current. Now the question is, if I put this link back on VCC, will these LEDs go nice and bright? Let's uh, give it a try. It's a bit tricky to get to this one, so I'm going to flip it around like that. There's VCC, there's the VCC pin. Oh, look at that. They are full brightness. Now you can see what's happening logic-wise. Uh, these are on all the time, and then they're just switching off when they're selected. The first six are off all the time and coming on when they're selected. These two are working the other way around. But yes, the internal connection between the chip and VCC must still be intact because now that it's able to pull current through that VCC connection, these LEDs are at full brightness. I'm actually going to flip all these around now. And uh, there it is. So now the chip is able to source current. And of course, these LEDs are seven of them are on and one of them is off. So it's having to source quite a lot of current. The only way it can do that uh, reliably is actually through its VCC pin, which is connected to VCC. And yes, it must be intact and it must be well intact because it's able to source current to all seven of the LEDs which are on. Only one of the LEDs is off. So yeah, I mean, we've shown that the ground connection must be intact because uh, when I connect it, I can sink lots of current. The VCC connection must be intact because when I connect it, it can source lots of current. And uh, yeah, let's just um, try another interesting thing. We're now sourcing current to all eight of the LEDs. So we certainly are going to need a source of current, which is through the VCC pin. If I take that out, you can see that it completely goes off. Let's put that back in. But since we're sourcing current to these LEDs and not syncing it, do we need a ground connection? No, we don't, because we're not syncing any current. The internal workings of the chip are perfectly happy to operate with the tiny amount of um, current to ground that it's getting through these various 100K resistors, but uh, it needs very, very little. We certainly don't need any for the LEDs because they're being sourced current, uh, and so we don't need a ground connection. Incredible. So yeah, when I said in the last video that these chips are tough little critters, actually I didn't say critters, but I'm saying it now. These are tough little chips. Well, they are, aren't they? Because I connected um, one of these chips completely the wrong way around, VCC and ground connected to uh, the wrong polarity. I've got a non-current limited uh, supply. These things can easily supply two amps. Uh, maybe these wires can't, but yeah, I mean, a lot of current went through that chip when it was connected reverse polarity and it survived and it's working as far as I can tell, in all sort of ways I can test this, it's working 100%. So there it is. All the chips have been tested. Um, even the one that I reverse polarited and which smoke came out tested, 100% working well. Should we watch that video of the smoke coming out again? Yeah, let's do it. Cheerio. Very little solder on this one, so let's plug it in. Uh, obviously no solder bridges on this because there wasn't enough solder to create bridges. Let's pop it in. Uh, oh, something's not, oh, that's frying. Yeah, that's getting hot. Let's switch that off right now. Something's burnt. 